The Sopranos is a show about the Mafia. We follow the mobsters of the DeMeo family of New Jersey as they go about their daily lives committing various crimes. And, as you would imagine, the main adversary they face in this pursuit is law enforcement, mainly the FBI. Throughout the entirety of the show, the FBI is trying to build a case against Tony and the other leaders of the mob. They engage in a prolonged investigation, utilizing not only wiretaps and surveillance bugs, but also a network of informants in Tony's crew to try and bring a charge against him. However, while this might seem like a noble goal, the methods they use to go about it are not only deeply destructive to the people they coerce, it also blurs the line between who the good guys and the bad guys really are. They were crooks and killers too, but that was the business, right? The American way. Alright, real quick before we get started, I wanted to thank all the supporters who make these videos possible. If you would like to support the channel and get early access to videos, or a shout out in the credits of the video, check the links in the video description. We're first introduced to the FBI in the first season, after the death of acting boss Jackie April. It's revealed that they not only know about the organization's structure and members, they also have a new target after Junior is declared boss going after him and later Tony once he takes over. Unlike the local police, who are generally portrayed as either incompetent or actually working for the mobsters, the FBI is a legitimate threat. They have seemingly unlimited resources to investigate the mob, and they're focused on that goal. This is the FBI, Tom. Local cops, you buy them a Christmas tree, they'll give you a grandmother. But you know how tight these fat cocksuckers can keep it. One of the big questions of the first season is if Big Pussy is an informant for the feds. A corrupt cop on Tony's payroll tells him that he flipped, but Tony doesn't want to believe that his friend would betray him like that. Tony eventually comes to believe that one of his capos, Jimmy Altieri, is actually the rat, but meanwhile Pussy has disappeared and no one knows why. I can't find Pussy anywhere. However, it's eventually revealed that Pussy is in fact an informant, and has been working with the FBI after he got pinched trying to sell heroin. With the threat of 30 to life over his head, Pussy is forced to rat on his best friend. This creates serious psychological distress for Pussy, who can't deal with the guilt he feels over this betrayal. To cope, he ends up developing an almost Stockholm-like syndrome for his abusers, the FBI, and imagining himself as a law enforcement agent. All of a sudden, we're the good guys. It's the worst case of Stockholm Syndrome I've seen since Patty Hearst. That was said. Now, I don't want to make it seem like Puss is innocent in all of this. He's a murderer and a vicious criminal, and he arguably has his coming to him. But it's clear that the FBI targeted him specifically because he cared about his family, as they knew they could coerce him into doing whatever they wanted. Who is this guy Pussy, huh? Who is he? He's a man who loves his family above all else. Well, guess what? That's their favorite target. Also, for what it's worth, there's a deleted scene that actually shows Pussy getting arrested for dealing heroin. In the scene, the FBI ignore his calls for a lawyer and threaten him into making a deal. Now, I'm not sure if it's fair to include a scene that wasn't actually in the show as evidence, but it does fit the pattern of the FBI doing whatever it takes to coerce people into becoming informants, regardless of what it does to them. The same is true of Eugene Pontecorvo. In the sixth season, it's revealed that he actually is an informant as well. He ends up inheriting $2 million from a relative and wants to retire and move to Florida so that he can have a fresh start with his family, particularly his son who's a drug addict. After being caught between Tony who won't let him retire and the FBI who also forced him to stay and keep informing, Eugene feels there's no hope and takes his own life. Now again, Eugene is a murderer so I'm not saying he deserves all the sympathy in the world or anything. But it does fit the FBI's pattern of using people who are worried about their families. Given his son's drug addiction, I can't help but wonder if Eugene became an informant to get him out of trouble somehow. After all, that's exactly why Carlo agrees to cooperate after his son gets picked up on drug charges. His kid, the imbecile, Jason. He got picked up yesterday, Patsy told me. For selling ecstasy. This disregard for their informant's well-being seems to be centered on one character in particular, FBI Chief Frank Cubitoso. 
he is the lead investigator in charge of the task force that's trying to take down the Sopranos. He also displays what seems to be a personal animosity against Tony and the other Italian mobsters. When the FBI bring Tony in to show him the Green Grove tapes, not only does Frank go out of his way to distance himself and fellow Italian agent Grasso from Tony, he also seems to enjoy rubbing Tony's nose in the fact that his mother wanted him whacked. You and I are not combata, Tony. You on the one hand, me and Agent Grasso on the other. Even though our ancestors all hail from the same sunny peninsula. What the fuck is your problem? Now, maybe you can say he's just enjoying bringing down a criminal like Tony. He later taunts Tony when they arrest him at the end of season two. Tony Soprano, weak in the knees. Can't stand the heat? I got food poisoning. You think this bothers me, you fuckhead? But other agents like Harris don't seem to share this animosity. In fact, Harris looks sad for Tony as Kubitoso plays the tapes for him. I've done a whole video on the friendship between Harris and Tony, which you can check out here, but it's clear that the FBI don't necessarily need to hate their targets the way that Kubitoso does. And Frank's disregard doesn't just apply to Tony. He warns Agent Lapari against being too sympathetic towards Big Pussy, as he wants to keep them at a distance emotionally so that they can continue to use him for their own benefit. I'll tell you though, I'm kind of worried about Sal with these fantasies of law enforcement. These things can work two ways, Skid. You can find yourself getting too close. Kubitoso reminds me of Melfi's ex-husband, Richard, who despises mobsters because they give Italians a bad name. People like him are the reason Italian Americans have such a bad image. I agree. I wonder if the reason he shows so little regard for their cooperators is because of this bias. Now again, you can make the case that all of these guys are scumbags, so there's no need to be concerned about their well-being. After all, if the FBI hadn't gotten to them, they would have just continued their crimes without a care in the world. But that justification goes out of the window when it comes to Adriana. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and make your jokes. We all know that I'm a simp for Adriana. But the way that the FBI treat her really gets under my skin. In the third season, after having lost Pussy as an informant, the FBI try a new strategy. They identify Adriana as a potential weak point and send an undercover agent Danielle to make friends with her. Adriana, being the trusting naive girl that she is, not only confides in Danielle about her personal problems, but also even brings her around into Tony's house. Eventually, Adriana ends the friendship after Christopher makes a move on her. The FBI then bring her in and threaten her into becoming an informant. In particular, they threaten to reveal that she brought an undercover FBI agent into Tony's house, which would almost certainly get her killed. And after you make bail, you can explain to Tony Soprano why you brought an undercover federal agent into his home during Sunday dinner. We'll probably oh never God. hear about it, though. Oh Chances God. are you and Christopher will just disappear. <laughs> Though they have no substantive charges on her at this time, they know they can manipulate her because she's naive and inexperienced in dealing with law enforcement. We really don't know him. He listens. <laughs> And not only do they strong arm her into cooperating, they also allow her to be killed. After a murder happens in Adriana's club, the FBI officially take the kids' gloves off and threaten her with a charge unless she wears a wire. You've been giving us shit, and I've had it. I want you wired up. I want Tony Soprano on tape. Your boyfriend, too. No, I'm not doing it. Then you're all out of options. This convinces Adriana to come clean with Christopher and try to get him to flip on Tony. He considers it, but after realizing what life without the glamour of the mob would really be like, he turns Adriana over to Tony, who has her killed. Her life ends with her crawling away on her hands and knees before being shot by Silvio. Now, the FBI say that they can't offer her surveillance or protection because she refused to wear a wire. But is that really true? I mean, they had no problem sending multiple agents to watch Tony's children on the off chance that they would return home while they were putting the bug in his house. I feel like if they wanted to, 
they could easily post one agent to watch the apartment in case something went wrong. You could make the argument that this takes place after 9-11 and thus resources are being taken away from Organized Crime Division to focus on counterterrorism. Maybe they don't have as many agents working on the task force, and it's true we are missing some agents like Skip Lapari. But we also have multiple new agents like Cicerone and San Severino, and Harris hasn't even been transferred to counterterrorism yet, so I don't think manpower is the issue. I think it's the general apathy the FBI feel towards their informants. To the feds, they're expendable, just another tool in their arsenal for getting their targets. And again, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be going after mobsters. That's their job. But the way that they do it is absolutely destructive to all those involved, and seems unnecessarily so. I mean, they blow through at least five informants over the course of the show, and don't really have anything to show for it. It's only Carlo who flips in the very last episode that seems to yield any real evidence against Tony. Somebody's giving grand jury testimony on something. So Carlo has flipped. Maybe if the FBI took better care of the people working for them, they'd be around longer and be in a better position to provide information. The FBI is a business after all, and they need to invest in their assets if they want to see a return on investment. The feds were a business, Anthony. Millions of tax dollars invested in watching your ass. Sooner or later, just like you, they're going to want a return on that investment. But that's just one YouTuber's opinion. Let me know what you thought about the FBI in the comments, and stay tuned for more Sopranos content coming soon. Defund the FBI Ops Gracing Media, Daz J Kit, Sam Searland, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Shane Boyce, Matt Joyce, and Countess Von Zarevich. <laughs>